Today on BRS TV, we're going to talk about chloramines, what they are, why they're becoming more common, how to know if they're in your water, and how to properly treat for chloramines. Hi, I'm Ryan, host of BRS TV, where each week we explore a new topic related to reef keeping and saltwater aquariums. This week, we're going to dive into chloramines, which is a disinfectant used by municipal water supplies. Chloramines are basically just chlorine reacted with ammonia. They've been used to treat drinking water for approaching 100 years. However, it wasn't until recently that their use has been widely adopted. Chloramine usage has increased in recent years primarily due to new drinking water regulations that limit the concentration of potentially harmful disinfection byproducts that occur in drinking water. Well, disinfection is required in municipal water to protect us from waterborne illnesses like typhoid, hepatitis, and cholera. The disinfection byproducts are linked to some pretty nasty health issues and more closely regulated than ever. These byproducts are created when disinfectants like chlorine reacts with natural organic matter in water to create contaminants like chloroform. While both chlorine and chloramines will result in the creation of byproducts regulated by the EPA, chloramines are much less likely to react with the organics found in the water supplies and result in a significant reduction in the overall production of harmful disinfection byproducts. Chloramines are also much more stable, which increases the effectiveness at longer distances without having to increase the amount of disinfectant. So generally speaking, it sounds like chloramines are probably a good move for everyone, and likely the reason why several years ago chloramine use was estimated at around 10% of households, and now the EPA estimates that one in five households' water is treated with chloramines. The one part commonly missing and underreported is this change is happening as cities struggle to meet the new EPA limits on the regulated disinfection byproducts. The key word in that phrase is regulated. Well, chloramines absolutely do reduce the creation of the byproducts currently regulated by the EPA. Many people believe it results in higher concentrations of unregulated byproducts where the risks are largely unknown. This kind of opens Pandora's box because a vast majority of the byproducts from chloramines have even been identified yet, and some that have are theorized to be much more harmful than the toxins we were trying to avoid in the first place. As it relates to a reef tank, the ammonia used to create chloramines is also an issue. I don't think any of us want to use water containing ammonia for water changes or top off. Not only is ammonia toxic to the tank, but it's also a source of nutrients that will contribute to algae growth and decreased water quality. At this point, the desire to properly treat for chloramines and the resulting ammonia should be pretty obvious. Most reef tank owners who've had multiple years of success are likely using RODI water, which is by far the most widely adopted type of tap water filtration for reef tanks. Sadly, pretty much every stage on a common RO system has issues with chloramines. Standard carbon blocks will treat for chloramines to some degree, however there are some disadvantages. First is a typical reaction with chloramines and carbon primarily results in ammonia and chloride. Obviously the ammonia is the part we're concerned about. Second, chloramines are hard on the carbon blocks and will chew through them much faster, so you should closely monitor them for a chloramine breakthrough. Lastly, most of the cheaper carbon blocks are not the best solution for removing volatile organic compounds like the disinfection byproducts we were talking about. Sadly, RO membranes are also not the best solution for these things either. It's likely that they'll reduce the concentration of these toxins, but not to an acceptable degree. Same goes with the DI resin. It again will remove some, but likely not all, and can increase resin consumption, making it an expensive option as well. Luckily, there is a very simple solution to all this, which is a specialized carbon that can properly treat for these issues. This carbon is commonly referred to as catalytic activated carbon or surface activated carbon. This is referring to the increased amount of catalytic or surface oxide sites on the carbon. Where standard carbon and chloramines typically results in ammonia and chloride, surface modified carbon is much more likely to result in a second reaction with the surface oxides, which results in nitrogen gas and chloride, so ammonia is no longer an issue. In addition to that, surface activated carbons also perform significantly better than standard carbon at removing those VOCs and byproducts because they typically have a low ash microporous structure that results in a higher volume of surface area than most carbons. So more or less, all you need to do to get your RO system ready to treat for chloramines is switch to a different type of carbon block, which is only about 10 bucks more than the other options. Since most people only change them out once or twice a year, this is a pretty minimal expense. 
A typical pre-filter array looks like this. A standard sediment filter, a refillable cartridge filled with surface modified or catalytic activated carbon, and a carbon block specially designed for chloramines like the Chlor Plus from Pentec. The reason we use the refillable cartridge first is because it has a lower pressure drop and the granules are less expensive so you can let it do the bulk of the work and change this less expensive filter more frequently, which results in a longer life of the more expensive Chlor Plus block. One note on the refillable cartridges, I like to look for cartridges that don't have a sediment filter on the top which can clog with carbon fines. I prefer to use one with a sponge and then flush the fines out into a bucket. You can do this by unscrewing the third canister and letting the water flow out into a pail like a five gallon bucket. The chloramine systems we sell are nice because they have a three way flush valve installed so you can easily flush the fines down the wastewater line with the turn of a knob instead of messing around with the bucket. If you don't want to mess with that and don't mind the added expense, you could just run two Chlor Pluses as well. On a related note, if you suspect your city is using chloramines, it's pretty much required that you run two carbon stages because of the increased contact time required to properly treat them. If your RODI system only has four stages with one carbon block, you could buy a new system, but it'd be much cheaper to just buy a single stage to install before the system and use that for the sediment filter, then use the remaining can canisters for your two carbon blocks. For those of you that run large systems with heavy water demand, they also make a Core Plus in a 20 inch version that can fit inside our Spartan in a large radio flow version. We call it the Chloramine Monster. With this unit, you can just plug it in before your standard RODI system and it will provide extremely long contact times to properly treat systems with higher flow rates and water demands. The radio flow design means it takes water from all sides rather than through the bottom like a refillable cartridge. The radio flow depletes the filter uniformly to maximize the effective lifespan. Okay, now that we know why chloramines are an issue for us and how easy it is to properly treat for them, so how do you know if your city is treating your water supply with chloramines? Well, there are three really easy options. First is ask someone who knows. Your local reef club forum might be a good place to ask, but your best bet is to call the city hall and ask for the water treatment facility's phone number or find it on your last water bill. When you do get the number, just ask if the secondary disinfectant used in your city's water supply is chlorine or chloramines and they should know. You can also ask for a copy of your city's water quality report, which is sometimes on their website. If you have trouble with that process, you can also test for chloramines using a free and total chlorine test kit. Basically, you test for both, and the difference between the free and total chlorine is generally chloramines. Sadly, this might be the first and last time you use these two kits, so it's not very cost effective. However, if you do go this route, it might be interesting to test the water coming out of the carbon blocks occasionally to make sure there is no chlorine or chloramine breakthrough. This could possibly help you maximize the lifespan of your carbon blocks and save some money in the long run. Lastly, if you don't want to mess with any of these things, one in five households has chloramines in their water now, and this number is growing every day. So you can just make a safe bet and switch to chloramine blocks, or if this is your first system, just buy the chloramine system. These specialized blocks will not only work for both chlorine and chloramines, if your city is using simple chlorine, these blocks will last much longer than standard blocks, help reduce VOCs, disinfection byproducts, and might be the best route regardless. For instance, the super popular CTO Plus from KX Technologies is rated to remove chlorine taste and odor from 20,000 gallons at one gallon per minute, and the Chlor Plus is rated for 50,000 gallons at the same flow rate, so at about double the cost, you get two and a half times the efficiency, which makes it a better value in the long run. So if you're not sure or too busy to figure all this out, it's safe to act like you do and treat for them with specialized carbon. 20% of you do, and this figure is likely to grow. That wraps up today's episode. If any of you have any additional questions or helpful information for others who might be trying to figure all this out, do it in the comments area down below. As always, I look forward to interacting with everyone. If this is your first time with us, help us out with a quick thumbs up and subscribe. See you all next week with another episode of BRS TV.